Hey there CAD monkeys, sorry but it's that time again, AutoCAD 101 time. Let's bring AutoCAD over. And today's assignment. Today we're going to deal with what are called blocks. If you've played with SketchUp before, components are kind of what blocks are in AutoCAD. Um, a, a block is just a group of items that we want AutoCAD to treat as a single item. like. If we draw a sink, we don't want to have to grab the corners, I mean the curves and lines and circles and things of the sink separately each time. It'd be nice if they were one piece. Well, that's a block. Um, we'll use things like toilets, sinks, stuff like that as a block. We can use title blocks as a block. We may have whole apartment comp, you know, units as a block where we can place it, you know, the apartment has 12 different um, units, but they're all the same. And we can just do that as a block. It keeps our file size down a lot. And it makes it very easy to fix. Because if we go in and edit one of these, they all get updated. Um, so that's one of the real big advantages to blocks. Is thinking of it in terms like this. Um, to bring a block into your uh, drawing, um, you use this command insert. And to make a block, the command block. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, let's use insert. Um, right now, if I go to layers, you'll notice I've got a couple of the A detail layers, and that's about it in this drawing. Well, today we're going to draw on the floor plan layers. Oh no, that means typing in a whole bunch of new layer names. Maybe not. Um, if you're in an office and suddenly find that you need a whole bunch of layers that you don't have input that you use all the time, we can insert another AutoCAD drawing that has those layers and it'll bring them in. So if I go to block, and go uh, and well here it is anyway go to insert i'm not sure where it is in the pull down menu um i shortcut for insert it's got to be there in block somewhere i probably just needed to hit the down arrow right this part here these are the blocks that are currently in your drawing well there's not any we haven't made any yet um if we go to browse we can go out and pick files from our hard drive or flash drive or wherever um, in this case, we're going to use one called Assignment 8. I've, uh, hopefully it's been provided to you. If not, this is just to give you an idea anyway. It doesn't really matter. Other, well, if not, you'll have to manually type in all the floor plan layers. But if we go to Assignment 8 and hit Open, it's going to ask us where we want to put it. Just pick anywhere. Um, or at this point, we could actually hit Escape. We don't actually want this drawing necessarily somewhere in our build, our drawing. All we want are the layers. So we'll hit Escape. And you'll notice now we have all those floor plan layers. Yay! And we also, if we hit Insert again, you'll notice Assignment 8 now shows up as a block within our drawing. There isn't anything actually drawn in your Assignment 8. I just gave it to you so that you didn't have to type all the layers in. Um. So right now, you've done that. It's like, yay! Um, we're going to make AWA layer, the A wall layer is what AWA is. We're going to make that the current layer. And we're going to draw some stuff. We're going to make a table block, and then we're going to make some chairs, and then we're going to make a block with tables and chairs. Um, so we'll start with the AWA, and we're going to draw a rectangle to indicate our room. So go rectangle. And we want it um, to start at two foot six, seven foot. So two foot six, comma seven foot. And from there, we want to go over twenty-nine feet and what is it? Thirty feet. Thirty feet. And there's our room. Yay! All right. Now we're going to change to layer zero. And there's a reason that it's useful to draw blocks on layer zero. Um, if you have block that's made on layer 0, when you insert it, it'll take on the color and line weight and line type of whatever layer it's inserted on. That's not the case of a, any, a block made on anything other than layer 0. If you have a block that's, you know, well, if you made a block of this green rectangle that's on AWA, it's always going to be a green rectangle on AWA. Um, this is real handy, having a block take on those parameters of the layers real handy. I can make one toilet block, for instance. If I put it on the uh, 
a demolition layer that's red and hidden, it's going to be red and hidden. If I put it on the existing layer, it's going to be gray and kind of, you know, lighter pen weight. And if I put that exact same block onto the new plumbing layer, it'll look like a new plumbing block. So that's a real handy thing, having um, it drawn on layer zero. Sometimes you don't want this, like we were talking about title blocks. With a title block, you may want, you know, the title block's text to be one color and pen weight and the lines themselves to be real bold. So there are times that you want it on layer zero and times you don't. But for our table blocks today, we want them on layer zero. So make sure you put, whoops, stop it. Make sure that you get layer zero as your current drawing layer. Now we're going to draw a 48 inch diameter circle, or I mean telling you diameter, 48 inch diameter circle at that location. So circle and the center of the circle is two foot, I mean seven foot comma 12 foot. So seven foot comma 12 foot. And I can either do the math or I can type D right now and tell it 48. And yay, I've got a circle. We're going to turn this circle into a block. So we type D, which is the shortcut for block. And the really command aliases, I shouldn't say shortcut, but it's, eh, everybody calls them shortcuts. We need to give it a name. We're going to call it table for concept. We're going for the base point. The base point is where you want that table to be located. In this case, we're going to use the center. So we go pick point, hover over your circle until the center shows up. And if it's not one of your object snaps, type C-E-N or go change your object snaps real quick. So we'll click right there. Um, then you have to pick the items because I could make a block that has nothing in it, which would be stupid. Um, and so I pick my objects. Um, I do want this to convert to block. Um, we could have it retain, which would mean it just stays as a circle, even though it still created the block with it in it. Or we could have it delete. Back in the old days, AutoCAD auto automatically deleted. Um, I think I don't know if the assignment asked you to have it delete here so that you practice reinserting it. Um, either way is fine. Um, and yes, what exploding is means we can turn it back into circles and things later with the explode command. Um, so I'm going to hit, and it's probably not a bad idea to put a description here. This is my 48 inch table or something like that. And then hit your OK. You don't have to have a description, but it's not a bad idea. That is now a block. Um, if it wasn't, let's say I had picked the delete. Let's practice inserting it. Insert. Table, so you notice you've got two blocks in here now, table and assignment eight. And we have some options here with insert. Um, we can uh, we can have it so it, if we check this box, it's always going to ask us where we want to put it. If we check scale and rotation, whoops, it'll always want ask us how if we want to scale it up some and whether we want to rotate it. So let's go ahead and put those as to be asked for. And we'll put this at that seven foot 12 foot so seven foot comma 12 foot and it's asking you if you want to scale it just hit enter for one enter 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 that was enter for the x scale enter for the y scale because you can make them different um and the rotation well let's do one real quick enter and i'll just pick a point let's do the x at two the y at one and now i have that Occasionally, we'll do stuff like this on purpose. Um, not so much like this, but there are times when you want to say, well, what would this look like if it was two times wider or something? And so you can use the same block for things like that. But just something to remember that you have that as an option. One thing we'll do sometimes is we'll make a block that's like, let's say it's a door swing. Um, so it's like a, we'll make it one foot or one inch. And then with a one inch little arc, let me zoom in and I'll describe that. Here's a good example. Okay, we'll go up, we'll go up one inch, F8, one. And now I'm going to draw an arc. Well, let's draw another line real quick, one. And we'll draw an arc. That'll be the center of our arc, so C. And we'll pick this point and pick this point. Remember, arcs always turn in this direction. So click. 
Now let's delete that. A lot of times you'll use a symbol like this for a door. Um, let's make a block out of it real quick. Door. And we'll call it one. So we know it's a one inch door. This will be our base point. We'll pick both objects. And we'll delete this one. Now, we need to put in a door that's 36 inches, a 36 inch door. So we pick there. For our scale factor, we're going to tell 36. And so now, and then of course our rotation, however we need it to fit. So we can make one block that works for 24 inch doors, 30 inch doors, 34 inch doors, 36 inch doors, and we just have to scale it up. So sometimes we do use that scale factor to our advantage. Anyway, that's a whole nother topic. Back to our table block. All right. Um, now we're going to draw a chair. Um, and by the way, you can always, you don't, I'm sitting here giving you coordinates to draw these at. Half the time you're going to draw it out in La La Land over here and then move it to where you want it to be. Um, so don't worry about too much about, oh, where do I start? Where do I start? Just start somewhere. In this case, though, I've told you, and it might, uh, for beginning drafting people, it's usually helpful to be like, where do I start? Where do I start? Oh, it says right here to start here. Okay, okay. And so it kind of relieves people's anxieties. But I'll, I'll draw another one in a minute and show you how it really doesn't matter. But anyway, we're going to draw a circle at 7 foot, 15 foot. So circle, 7 foot, comma, 15 foot. Oops, way, way over there. I must have typed something. Uh, 78 foot, 15 foot? Yeah, that's a big issue. So line, seven foot, comma, 15 foot. And line, uh, Yes, I am quite with it today, aren't I? Circle, seven foot, comma, 15 foot. And we want this to have an 18 inch diameter. So D, 18 and there's my circle yay now we're going to trim off the bottom half of this so let's draw a temporary line there trim now if you didn't have um let's go back let's say you started line and you didn't have the quadrants of a circle selected oh darn it you could just type qua and QUA. You have to do it each time, unfortunately. So you don't have to exit the command if you ever need to. Just try to remember what the object snaps are called. And now we'll trim that off. And we don't really need this line, so we can delete it. That's why I didn't bother putting on the ZNP1 layer or anything. Now we're going to draw these lines of the chair. They're six inches long. So line. Um, I'll turn my snaps back on. Six. It's 18 inches wide, so 18. And back up six inches. And there's my chair. So I want to make it a block called chair. Block. Chair. Now, in this case, we want the base point that we're where we're going to insert this chair not to be on the block at all. We're going to pick the center of this circle. If you ever, if it won't show up, always ho ho hover over the circle itself, and then you'll get the center point. Now pick your objects, and uh, we'll convert to block this. I think I'd have you delete it in the assignment, but you get the idea. The nice thing about this is we want our chair to be around a central point on the table, so having that center point as our base point is quite easy. So I go insert. Now there's chair, I hit OK, I want to snap to the center. The scale is the same, so 1 and 1, and then I can either move my cursor around to pick a point. Um, I've got it in ortho, so I pick there. And I can repeat and do the same thing again. Remember, enter or that right button will start, start the last command again, so that makes it easier than typing insert, although it's really just the I, how hard is that? But we'll just go, okay, I'll pick on my circle again. Scale, enter, enter. There, that looks good. And I can either mirror right now or do insert again. Okay. Center. 
enter, enter, and then down. And yay, I've got my four tip chairs around the table. We could have also done this with a polar array. Um, if you remember the array command, um, allows you to copy in a rectangular grid. It also allows you to copy in a circular array. Um, we'll do that real quick, just so you, if that's not what this assignment's for, but let's go ahead and do it. Um, it's classic array. Um, we have to hit the polar button. Um, and now it's going to ask us how many objects. We can hit 4, 360. Let's pick our center of the array. That would be here. And at this point, we got to pick an object. And you can see how it's going to try to circle it around. Um, so that's, we do want them to rotate. Otherwise, our chairs will be pointing the same direction. So let's hit our OK and see what we get. Oh, I don't want it associative. I want it to still be individual objects. And ooh, ah, ooh, ah. It works. I could have done, like, if you'd had six objects, it'd have been a lot easier, or six tables, I mean, six chairs, it'd have been a lot easier to do this than to try to figure out that angle each time. For a, that's a good, good use of this. All right, now we're going to make a block of this called table two. So, block, because it's handy to have the chairs always attached. Table two. We'll still pick the center of the table as table two, select our objects, and we can leave it convert to delete. How many, however you want to do it, convert or delete, doesn't matter. Now that's one big block. You notice it's one big thing that we pick. If we put it on a layer other than zero, which we've been working on, whoops, you notice because we made it on layer zero, it takes on those layers line types and stuff. Now, it, you may notice that the line types are really teeny weeny. Um, that's because they're set up for like eighth inch dashes. This is a big room. Um, to adjust that, there's a command called LT scale, line type scale. So LT scale, I think LTS is a shortcut, but I'd have to check. Um, we're gonna plot this out at a quarter inch equals a foot. Um, which is 48 times smaller than it's really drawn. How did I figure that out? There's a quarter in an inch, a quarter inch equals a foot. Well, let's see, in a foot, there are 48 quarters of an inch. There's four per inch, there's 12 inches, four times 12 is 28, and four times 12 is 48. I'm glad I'm not a math teacher. Um, and so that's how you can figure out what that reduction scale is. It's 48 times smaller. Um, so we'll go LT scale and it's asking for an amount. We'll put 48. Now you can see the dashes. Cause it's basically, it's what that LT scale does is it scales the dashes up 48 times because we're going to reduce it 48 times. And so in the end, we'll get what we wanted, which are eighth inch spaces. Um, so go ahead and it talks about that in here in the assignment. So go ahead and put, um, chair, I mean, uh, table blocks, uh, table two blocks in, and I believe it was, ooh, what, where did I put it? Ray Classic, okay, 10 feet apart. So you can use a Ray Classic. Um, let's see if my ARCL works, yay. In this case, I do want a rectangular array. I'm gonna have three rows and three columns. I want them to be 10 foot apart. I select them and OK. We could also preview. Although it goes so quest fast, it's kind of not worth it. At this point, go ahead and grab some of them. Put them on different layers just to see how things work. Here, we'll put those on some yellow ones just so you get the idea. Oh, look, they all change layers and colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you've gotten the idea. Um, now. What we're going to do next is we're going to bring in that title block we made, that 8.5 by 11 title block. So if we go insert, find one of the files where you had that using browse. Um, what did we make? Which one did we make that on? I can't even remember. There's one. 
I'll have to erase it though, but that's okay. And if I bring it in right now, I'll have to scale it up to 48 times 2, because remember, it's little b. So um, we'll put, place it at 0, comma 0. And for the scale, 48 and 48. And the rotation angle, 0. And it's like, hey, that worked great. Except that we've got this other stuff on here. We wanted the title block, but not that stuff. There's a way to edit blocks in your drawing. It has a command. If you just double click on it, it'll start the command. The command's B edit, but just double clicking on a block is how you do it. Say OK. Um, and we'll just come in here real quick, delete that stuff. And Q save. And it should give us a thing. Are you done? Oh, close block editor. Save the changes to assignment four. Yeah, that's what it called it. Um, if we want to change, rename that, we could type rename. You don't have to. I'm just, just more things. Um, assignment eight. Oh, it brought a whole bunch of my blocks in with it. Oops. Sorry about that. I forgot I had all these in my file. This is another thing. If you've got blocks in a file when you bring it in, all those blocks will come in as well. Like, oh, look, I've got a baby grand piano. Ooh. Oh, that's one of me to rename just a sec. Um, but you notice, insert, I've got all those blocks in here now because the file I'd started the drawing with way back when had all that stuff. Um, we'll eventually start creating a whole bunch of... Um, here, spin it. That's the spin it. Let's get the one that was a grand piano. Ooh, grand piano. Let me see a grand piano. Where'd it go? Oh, I saw it. Baby grand piano. That's why it was. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. There's my piano. Isn't that exciting? Um, but you'll eventually create a whole bunch of files of these yourselves. One of the commands is called W block, which allows you to take an existing block in a drawing and throw it out and save it as its own AutoCAD file. Um, w block looks just like the block command, except now um, it's asking us where we want to put it so we could scroll out and give it a directory. In my case, I have a whole AutoCAD box directory that has canopy details, a door library, drafting symbols. Let's go to that one, my north symbols and all those break lines and things like that. Um, a furniture library, um, a masonry library, which has like bricks and the concrete masonry units and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, window frames, steel shapes, which has like the different channels. It's got uh, metal decking, joists, steel angles, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and so you'll eventually end up either making this or you'll certainly end up using one um, in an office. But this is how you would throw a file out to that. So you could either do like you would normally do with a block, hit pick point, select objects, or you could actually even pick a block name. Like if you wanted to save our table block that we've made, that table two, we could pick that. And now it'll, ask, it'll put it out there for us in whatever directory we want. But that's W block. Um, now, right now, we've brought this tie block in, but you'll notice. I can't edit that title without editing, you know, using that B edit to edit the thing itself. And if I didn't want to do that, we could use what's called explode. And we could explode this and now with this text and rectangles again. So sometimes there's going to be a box you bring in specifically to explode, like something like this. Um, sometimes there's blocks you're not going to ever explode, like the table. Why would you ever explode the table? Um, unless, oh, this table has to have six chairs. Well, what we might want to do in that case is, ex, you know, explode one, make it six chairs, and make a table two with six or something like that. Um, things like that. So you may want, you know, sometimes you want to explode it. Occasionally, like in this case, it's only going to be one case, and you only have the one title block in your drawing probably anyway, so it doesn't matter. Whereas this is a lot easier. The nice thing on AutoCAD is it remembers the definition of this chair one time, and it remembers the, remembers the definition of the circle table one time, and it remembers the definition of table two one time, 
everything else is just the XY coordinate where it's located. So if we just copied these, that would have been a whole lot of objects. This way, it's just nine objects. So it makes AutoCAD run much smoother. Not such a big deal anymore. The machines are so powerful. But back in the day, this was something that was an issue. Um, but just to give you an idea, later we're going to talk about something called an XREF, which is sort of like a block, but it automatically updates itself. Um, and those are real useful, and we don't edit those. I mean, we wouldn't have exploded them. We'd have just added extra text right here in those cases. And we'll talk about that later. But right now, see what you can do about creating these table blocks.